What's going on guys? We just electrified this trike. We got a Bafang BBS 2 motor on. We got a 48 volt golden motor shark pack battery right here. And now it's electrified. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the motor so you really know everything that's going on with it. So one of the main advantages with this motor here is actually that it has cadence sensing. So there's nine pedal assist levels and what this essentially means is that you can get exercise, although it's an electric bike, you can still get lots of exercise with this bike. So right now I'm pedaling and I'm getting a workout, but the motor is also giving me some assist. So this can be a really great thing. You know, if you're trying to increase the range on your rides, if you want to spend more time out on your bike, but you're a little worried about, you know, like maybe you don't have as much like strength as you used to and you can't stay out as long, this option, this electric option, will allow you to ride for much longer. And you know, even if you don't want to pedal anymore, now you have a full throttle option. Look, so I'm just gonna go straight throttle now. And I'm just, I'm not even pedaling anymore, it's great. So the electric, the electric motor, and specifically this Bafang motor that has this pedal assist option, it's fantastic for really allowing you to do as many things as you want on your bike, you know? You get a lot of versatility with this. Hey, how's it going everybody? Today we're gonna to be installing this Bafang BBS02 motor on this trike. I'm gonna show you guys all the parts that come included with your BBS02 kit. After that, we'll get into the installation. So real quick guys, I just wanna show you all the components that come included with your BBS02 kit. Starting out with the motor and controller back here. I'm not actually gonna show the wiring right now because I'll be showing that later in the video when we're doing the installation. Here we have the display. This is the C965 display, and this, this kit included this display, but you can also select different displays when buying a kit. Here we have the user manual. Um, right here, we have the inner and outer lock ring, so they're actually connected right now, I'll take them apart. And we have a motor mount here. So basically, these are gonna be used for like securing and mounting the motor. This is the thumb throttle. Um, this is what comes standard in the kit, but you can also pay a little bit extra and you can get a twist throttle or a half twist throttle. Here we have the crank arms and the crank arm bolts. Right here is the speed sensor, and I'll be showing you guys how to install all this later, of course. So here we have the chain ring. This is a stock chain ring that comes with the kit, and we have the chain ring cover. Right here is the wiring harness. I'll show you this later. And finally, we have the e-brakes right here. Okay guys, so real quick here, I'm going to be removing this front derailleur. I've already loosened it a bit. Um, I'm going to be getting rid of this chain ring here and um, the bottom bracket. Just all these components because this is where the motor is going to be going. And I'm also using this, uh, this is a crank extraction tool. I'm using this to remove the cranks. Okay, that came off pretty easily. Okay guys, so now I've removed the cranks, I've removed the front derailleur, and I just took out the bottom bracket. This bike actually had a cup and cone bottom bracket, which is a, uh, it's not as common of a type. I'm gonna leave a video link for removing cup and cone bottom brackets in the top right corner of the video. Generally, you're gonna be using a tool like this to remove normal bottom brackets, but this one was just a bit special because it was a cup and cone bottom bracket. So now that everything's out of the way, I got my motor here and um, notice this is the non-drive side of the motor. This is the drive side. That's where your chain ring is gonna go. So I'm taking this around here and I don't wanna pinch this cable here. This is the uh, brake cable. So just be careful if you have a cable there. Okay guys, it's now time to attach this motor mounting plate to the motor. This is for securing the motor. And you'll notice on this side here, there are teeth. And on this side, there are indentations. So you wanna make sure when you're installing this that the teeth side is facing in towards the bike. Now, these screws here are provided with your kit. Um, for securing this. However, 
These are meant for like a, uh, a 68 millimeter bottom bracket. And right here we actually have a 73 millimeter bottom bracket. So if you do have a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, these screws are not gonna work for you. What you can do is you can go ahead and order the 73 millimeter screw set, and this will allow you to screw these in all the way. Okay, next I will be installing this inner and outer lock ring here on the bottom bracket. First, the inner lock ring. And when you're doing this part, you wanna actually pull your motor up to get as much clearance as possible from the ground. If you have a Bafang installation tool, it's very helpful here for torquing it down all the way. And now the outer lock ring. Okay guys, so now we're back on the drive side of the bike and it is time to install the chain ring. So your kit, it comes with this like stock chain ring right here. And today we're actually gonna be installing this Lucky Bling Ring, a customer, they requested us to install, this is their bike. Um, essentially like the main advantages to this custom bling ring versus the stock chain ring is that the bling ring, it has like a better offset. So it can like, it can help with a lot of possible like chain line issues you may have. Another main advantage is that it has a narrow wide teeth pattern and that's gonna like, basically prevent your chain from like coming off the chain ring as much. So overall, we highly recommend this product, but you can always use the stock. And also with the kit, you have a, uh, a chain ring cover that comes to cover up the stock bling ring. So these are the screws that come with your kit and like, you're just gonna use these. I don't know if you can see here, but there are five holes on this drive cover, five holes here. We're just gonna line them up and screw, screw it in. So now I'm gonna break down all the wires that are coming from the controller for you guys. So this is for your battery connection here. This one here is if you wanna hook up any lights. This eight pin female plug here, this is for your main wiring harness. Okay, now there are, both of these wires you'll notice are three pin female. Um, this one is for your speed sensor and then this one is if you wanna hook up a shift sensor coming from your controller. So real quick, I'm just gonna attach the wiring harness. I'm gonna make that connection. Guys, when you're making your connections, you really wanna be careful about lining up these arrows. If you don't line up the arrows, what can end up happening is you can end up bending some of the pins inside and that can like mess up your connection. So please be careful, guys. So as you can see, you got the arrows lined up there. And that connection is now good. Here, so we've got these two three pin female plugs. These are for your e-brakes. Right here, we have this five pin male plug. This is for the display. And then the three pin male plug here is for your throttle. Okay guys, so I've taken basically everything off the handlebars and I've even, uh, I've even loosened this brake here. These are the stock brakes on this trike and we're gonna be replacing them with the e-brakes. So I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna show you like one side because it's the same on both sides so just follow the same process here that you follow on the other side so the first step is just going to be like dismantling this brake we need the brake cable to insert into the new e-brake so i'm going to show you guys that real quick so i'm just unscrewing this all the way there should be like a slot here in the screw okay so basically actually just slid that piece right off there so now you can see the brake cable there and you pull the brake back there's like a little latch right here and you're just going to pull that piece out so you guys can see that so i don't no longer need this i've got this out i'm just going to slide this off real quick 
Okay, and now I will be putting on this right e-brake right here. I'm not fastening it for now, but I'm just gonna show you guys like putting this piece back in there. So once again, we have a similar situation here where the end piece here, it needs to latch into there and the brake cable needs to route through this line. So I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put this piece in first. Now I need to get the brake cable to go straight through there. Okay, cool, so there we go. So guys, I'm now gonna be putting the display right here. As you can see here, we got the C965 display. This is also known as the 800S. And it has an accompanying, accompanying uh, pin pad here. So the display is gonna go here and then the pin pad will go on the handlebar over here. So with your, with this display, like they have these like rubber, these rubber mounting pieces. Um, you might not need uh, two, I'm needing both of them actually. Usually you just need one or the other. Um, so I put the uh, thinner one inside of the thicker one. It's because right here the bike frame is like, it's, just, it's super thin, so. So I'm just sliding this in like that. And then it will clip in over here. All right, cool. So it looks pretty centered there. Um, and now we'll be uh, fastening it. They provide screws for this. And then after that, we'll be putting the pin pad on over there. That's good. So we got the display screen installed now. I'm gonna be putting the pin pad right here. And the pin pad and the throttle, this is kind of personal preference. So my plan is to have the pin pad here and then the throttle right there next to it. I feel like this is the best way to go given these handlebars. So just kind of clip this on like so. And then we have to secure it. So I'll be doing that now. For any of you guys watching that aren't aware, the pin pad essentially just allows you to like use the display easily while you're riding. You'll notice the plus and, mi and the plus and minus buttons here. These are like um, basically used for increasing the pedal assist or decreasing the pedal assist level. And there's like different functionalities within the display. If you want to find more information out about this particular display, we actually have a video on the C965 display. So I'll be linking that video. And um, we also have lots of other display videos for Bafang. So, you know, be sure to check those out on our YouTube channel if you're like trying to figure out which display is best for you. So now I wanna put on the throttle and I'll just be sliding that in right there. There's like, basically this is where you fasten it. I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but there is a screw in there that we have to tighten. So I'm happy with that. I feel like I can safely change the pedal assist level here with the plus and minus buttons while not hitting the throttle. Um, and also, you know, once you secure like these peripherals, you can always go back later and adjust them. So, you know, just uh, mess around with it a bit until you have it how you like it. Okay guys, so real quick, as you remember before, we plugged in the wiring harness at the motor controller. So now we can actually attach all these peripherals here. So I'll be starting with the, uh, I guess I'll start with the brakes. So remember the, um, on, on the wiring harness, the e-brakes are the female three pin plugs, these two yellow ones here. And then you'll notice the brakes have the corresponding male three pin. So just please make sure to line up the arrows guys when you're doing this. That way you don't have any issues with your connections later. The other brake now. So the green one here on the wiring harness, this green male, this is for the, uh, the display. So I got the corresponding female plug coming from the display right here. And then finally we have the throttle that's so on the wiring harness, the throttle is a three pin male plug. And then you'll notice the throttle has the corresponding female plug. So line up those arrows again. All right, and we're good to go now. So everything's hooked up. I don't have the battery plugged in at this point and I'll be doing that next actually. But if I did, you should now be able to like turn on your display and stuff. 
So now I'll be installing this 48 volt, 14.5 amp hour shark pack on the trike. So generally the way the battery mounts on the bike, so look, check this out. You slide this piece off here and now you have your battery cradle and then the battery. So I'm gonna put the battery aside for a second. I just wanna show you guys basically how mounting the cradle works. So usually on like many bikes and even trikes, you'll have like some screw holes here and screws because there's sometimes like a water bottle holder or something like that here. Um, on this trike in particular, so then if you do have that, um, you would then line this up with the screw holes and then you would screw in basically the cradle onto the down tube here. So then this is now secure and then you can slide your battery on. However, in our, in our situation here, you'll see there's no screw holes. So we kind of have to improvise. And in order to make this work, we have a, we have a tool, we have a part here. This is called the triple bob. So this is basically gonna create like screw holes for us. So as you can see on here, there are one, two, three screw holes. So we'll be able to use this to then attach the cradle to the bike. So basically to secure this, onto the down tube, they provide these hose clips here. So there's like a latch, there's three latches for the three hose clips. You just line that up like so. I'm actually gonna go the other way real quick with this. Okay. I'm just gonna start it and then finish this with the screwdriver. Okay, so just for the purpose of the video, I'm actually just gonna finish like installing this off the camera all the way, but I've already installed it enough where you can get an idea of how this is gonna work. So now that the triple bob is on here, you're gonna line up these, these holes here, these slots in the cradle to the screw holes on here. Okay. And then let's screw them in. Okay, now you'll see our battery can come in here. There we go, and we're good to go. So the last thing we haven't done yet is installing the speed sensor. So this is the speed sensor wire I showed you guys earlier, and it's it's the three pin uh, female, and it's shaped a little bit weirdly, the plug. So it's just gonna plug into this piece here. This is the, um, basically you have like the, uh, the sensor piece right here and that's where like the magnet is going to be passing by when you attach the magnet on the spoke so i'm just going to line up the pins real quick plug that in essentially you have some like tape here and you have a spot for zip ties so that can like secure onto your bike frame you basically just have to figure out a way to secure it onto your bike frame so that this magnet will pass by the sensor every time the wheel rotates so I'm going to be doing the front wheel this time. I'm not going to show you guys right now, but if you want to do it on the rear wheel, you can get like some extension wires for this. Once that's done, the last thing will really just be securing all my wires. I have some zip ties here and I have some sleeves and then we'll be good to go. Okay guys, so the bike is now complete. I want to show you real quick just how we like finished it up. So we added a sleeve here. We just want to secure all the wires. Um, we added some zip ties here and there, just like securing wires towards the bike frame. You always want to make sure you keep, you're keeping like wires away from the pedals and like the chain ring and stuff. You don't want wires getting caught in there. As you can see here, we have another sleeve just for like protecting the wires. Um, any wires coming from the controller that you're not using, just make sure to like heat shrink them so water doesn't get in there or anything. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So um, our customer, they, they reached out to us to install this motor for them. They were saying they want to spend more time on their bike. They want to use it like uh, maybe for even functionality purposes, like uh, going to the grocery store and stuff. But you know, as you get a little bit older, it can be hard to, to use your bike as much. So this motor, it's gonna help the, our customer out a lot with that. And we're really excited for our customer to be picking this up. We think it's gonna, they're really gonna enjoy it. And we, uh, yeah, we're really happy with how it came out. Oh,